strengthen us in Jesus' name. May we do everything according to your mind in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God, for in Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Please let's rise on our feet as we give thanks to the Lord. Let's appreciate the Lord for seeing a new month. Let's give thanks to his name. Let's worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. It's not by our strength to be here this morning. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for seeing another new month, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That none of us is missing, Father, we say thank you. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. All adorations belongs to you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, we appreciate you, Lord. There is none like you. Give him all the thanks. Wave your hand to the Lord. Thank him. Appreciate him for you to be here this morning. It's not by your power. It's not by your strength. But by the grace of the Lord, you are here. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our hallelujah belongs to you, Lord. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because there is no like you. Father, accept our praise this morning. Accept our worship this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you deserve it. Thank you, Lord, because our, our hallelujah belongs to you, Lord. Receive all the glory, Lord. Receive all the honor. All adorations belongs to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
to see the beginning of a new spring in the year 2022. Lift up those beautiful hands and begin to worship the King of Kings. Begin to thank him. Return all hallelujah to him. The one that was, the one that is, the one that changes not, the everlasting God. The one that was in the beginning. The one that is in the now. The one that will remain unchangeable in eternity to come. Worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lords. Worship the I am that I am. Lift up your voices, children of God. Worship him that woke you up this morning. Worship him that gave you the breath of life to stand tall in the congregation of the living. Father, we have come to say thank you. We have come to bow before you, Lord. We kneel at your presence this morning. Lord, you are a great God. So great that three heavens cannot contain you. Bigger than the biggest. Higher than the highest. Stronger than the strongest. Deeper than the deepest. Most high God. The one that three heavens cannot contain. And he decided to make the earth his footstool. Father, we worship you. Great and mighty are thou. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Our God indeed is a great God. 
the Bible describes him in Psalm 90 verses 1 and 2 as the one that has been our dwelling place in all generations, even before the mountains were brought forth, or ever he has formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, he is God. I want us to once again lift up our hands and begin to worship him, the self-existent God, the sovereign being, the one that was, his name is Jehovah Elohim. He created all things. His name is Jehovah Hosinu. He is the maker of all things. Dearly beloved, worship him. The one that woke you up this morning. Lift up those voices. Let the heavens hear you. Shake the head with your voices this morning. Join the 24 elders. Join the four beasts. Join them to worship King. The angels that are buying down 24 hours. Worshiping the King of Kings. Blessed be your holy name, thou that existed from the beginning, thou that is from everlasting to everlasting, thou that was, that is, that is. Unto you is this gathering made this morning. We have come to say thank you, Lord. We have come to say thank you, Lord. Blessed, blessed be your holy name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Say, Father, thank you, King of glory. For satisfying me with good things. Thank you, thank you for your mercies and loving kindness. Please pray that prayer. Thank him for his loving kindness. Thank him for his mercies over you. It has been by the mercies of God that you and I were not consumed. We are not consumed. We are standing tall. Ah, this is the month of April. A beginning of another quarter. He led you through January, through February, through March. Here you are. In this month of April, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Say, Father, today I'm here in your presence. Please empty me of myself and fill me of yourself. Let's pray that prayer, Father. I have come, O God Almighty. Empty me of everything I have brought in, O oh God. And please, Lord, fill me of yourself. Fill me of yourself, O oh God Almighty. 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 I will not go back the same way I came, Lord. Touch me afresh, O oh God. Do something new in my life today. Do something new in my life today. Rekindle your fire of revival in my life. Set me ablaze with your fire. Let me begin to burn, oh God, and shine for the King of glory, Lord Almighty. The Bible said when Moses was with God, his face began to radiate. And when he went out, the people could not look at his face because the radiation of the glory of God was around him. Tell God, as you step out of this auditorium today, let people know you came to worship God. Let them see the glory of God in your life. Begin to bask in the glory of God. Father, Lord Almighty, fill me up, O God, to overflowing. Having emptied me of self, fill me with your spirit. And let me go home with your presence, O God. And let me go there to shine forth like the light that shined in the midst of darkness. Our world is full of darkness. Father, as I live today, I will go out there and begin to shine in the glory of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Say, Father, let all my enemies perish. Uh, the Bible says when the Israelites were planting, the Midianites will wait for harvest time and they begin to go and remove. Let God say, God, every Midianite in my life, every Amalekite in my life that have come to destroy, uh, that have come to steal from me, that have come to kill me, Father, destroy them from my life. Destroy them from your church. They will not be here, King of glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Say, Father, every demon on assignment concerning this gathering today, let them receive the fire of God. Render them useless today, O God. Let them not flourish in their plan. Don't let them execute their plan. Let the fire of God flourish them today, today. 
catch fire in the name of Jesus. Destroy them, Lord. Destroy them, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you. As we gather to thank you in dancing and singing and rejoicing. Ah, let there be a revival in our hearts. Let there be a revival in our souls. Let there be a revival in this church today. In the mighty name of Jesus. We prophesy into the month of April. Ah, month of April. We prophesy into your womb. You are very unique. You are very significant. Carry goodness. Be full of blessing. Be full of mercy. Be full of good health. Be full of breakthroughs. Be full of fire of God that you will burn forth into the year. And you are before the year ends. This is going to be nine months from now till December. Ah, you will deliver goodness at the end of the year. And you will give birth to children of God that is refined, that is rekindled in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We declare this meeting open in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can somebody say awesome God? God is so good. And in Him there is no darkness at all. Can somebody wave your hands to Jesus as we worship today? Hallelujah. Open your mouth and worship the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Oh.
can worship him in your own language. Worship him in your own language. Praise his name in any way you can. us up this morning we worship you. There is no other God we are bowing down to than the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The one that was able to wake us up this morning. Without you 
we couldn't have been here. We say thank you. Who is like unto you? We have seen great things that you have done. Things that beat the imagination of human beings. We say thank you. Lord, all what we did is to praise and worship you. Please accept us as we are. If there is any way that we have made mistake or we didn't do it right, please, Lord, just have mercy. We are ready to receive correction. Just show us the way. Holy Spirit, we know you are here. Please take control of this service. Move like never before. Hmm. You know why we have gathered. That's why you created us. That's why we have come. Please, that which you have planned for this day, let it come to pass. You said that your word will never return to you void. And so we stand by that word. That everything that you have spoken concerning us, Lord, let it come to pass today. You have principles, you have prophecies, and you have promises like we heard today. I ask, oh God, let your promises concerning us, let it be fulfilled this morning. This is a new month, Lord. <laughs> Lord, let something happen that to show us that you are with us. At the end of this service, Lord, let your name be glorified. Don't let anybody go back home the same. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Please, you may take your seat and God bless you. Amen. Today is our thanksgiving service. Always first service of the month we dedicated to thank God for what he has done in the past month, past years, and so on and so forth. So today, during thanksgiving like this, we give opportunity to people to give their testimony to testify to what God has done. Testimony changes people's life. Testimony, when you key in, it also works as if you are praying. And I believe that these testimonies will turn around somebody's life today in Jesus' name. If you still have testimony and you have not given your names and you want to testify, please meet the ushers, give your names, and then they will bring it here. We have here three testifiers. As I call you, please you will come forward to give your testimony. First on the list is our daddy, Oladejo Olatunde. Oh, is it daddy or mommy? Daddy. Oladejo Olatunde. God bless you. Can we give a clap of ring as he comes forward? Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, please. Come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My testimony is I thank God I'm alive today. I thank God I'm a living being. So I want to turn my testimony into a song. And the title of my song is Heaven of Rest. Heaven of Rest. Heaven of Rest. Yes, holy side eggs sell us out to life sin. So bad in with sin. And distress till I hear a sweet voice saying, Make me your choice. And I entered the heaven of rest. Oh, God, my soul, 
In the having of rest, I will sail the wild seas no more. The tempest may sweep every wild stormy day. In Jesus, I'm saved evermore. I yielded myself to his tender embrace. And take the king all of the world. My faith is well off, and I'll call my soul. The having of rest is my Lord. I've got my soul in the having of rest, and still the wild seas no more. Tempest may sweep every wild stormy day. In Jesus, I'm safe evermore. The song of my soul since the Lord has been the old stories to blessed of Jesus will save. Who's to have, I will have a hope in the having of rest. I've got my soul in the having of rest. I will sail, there will cease no more. The tempest may sweep over wild stormy day in Jesus. I'm saved evermore. Who oh, come to the safe via he patiently wait to save by his power divine. Come and call your soul in the having of rest and say, My beloved is mine. I've got my soul in the having of rest. I will sail the wild seas no more. The tempest may sweep over you while stormy seas. In Jesus, I'm saved evermore. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I now understand. I now know why. Hmm. May the Lord bless that song and use it to touch our heart in Jesus' name. My people will say, Abajo. I now know why. Hmm. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Oh, no wonder. Praise God. The Lord will increase your strength, sir. The Lord will take you to a greater height. He will continue to use you to the glory of his name. In Jesus' name. Let's call on Dickness Mary Okun. Can we give a clap of him to Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. Children of God, hallelujah. Amen. Better than that. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so excited today. I can't hide this testimony. I can't hold it. This testimony. Uh, I'm so happy today. I have seven children, but what was missing? For many years, I did not see him. No contact. Ah, nobody gives to him. But when I came to Jordan, the first form they gave me, that was the request I put. Hallelujah! 
So I'm sure daddy prayed. <laughs> and I prayed. Yesterday was a good news. And today I cannot hide. I have to testify the good, the mighty work of God. He has done it for me. He came back home. And my seniors, uh, my second son made video called. I saw him for real. Is this you? Oh. Hallelujah! Oh. I saw him alive and healthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God has done it. Ah, wonderful month of April. It started with 1st April. With good news. It will be like that for all of us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All I have to say, Baba O Jordan was for a purpose. God has done it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know if you know what it means for you not to see your, your son or your children and then suddenly they appear. Even us that our son was here, just nothing is happening, but he's away from us. I know how I feel. How much more the one that has gone for years and then come back like a prodigal son. Hmm. This month of April, I prophesy into your life, whatever you've lost, it will be restored. Maybe somebody did not hear me. If you have lost anything, no matter how many years, this month, it will be restored in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you because it's a month of restoration. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. That child will be the best. That child will serve God. Yeah. Will release the word of God and the power of God's anointing upon his life. Yeah. Wherever he is, listen to the word of God. Every demonic power over your life is destroyed today in Jesus' yeah. name. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Let's call on. Sister Matty, the big English woman. 
Can we give a clap of ring as she comes forward? As our sister said here, we, my, our com my coming to Jordan is a blessed place. My coming to Jordan, God had a purpose. And today will be one of the many testimonies I have since coming to this holy land. I call Jordan holy land. I stand here today on behalf of Abir. She is super busy. She has so many things to do. Her room is upside down, yes, mountain of clothes here and so many things are going on. So she was not, she wanted to come, but she just cannot make it. So I'm here on her behalf. I just give God the glory. I praise him for what he has 360 degree transformation, Abir, complete and total transformation, black, black to white, you know, if if only you know her life before, I think the only one person, people who know, the one person who knows Sister Sang. And uh, so, and I first want to thank God for what he has done. He saved her, he changed, he transformed her. And I want to thank mommy and daddy for their total dedication, never giving up, mentoring her, calling her, pushing her, and she is where she is today. I also want to thank my sister Sangi, who has, who is always with us through ups and downs, good times, bad times, high and low. And um, yeah, God is taking Abir on higher grounds, higher grounds. So she leaves tonight for Iraq on a mission work. It's very rare that a Jordanian <laughs> who was a Muslim is going on a mission work and I think this is really, really, I mean, it's crazy, you know, when you think of it. So she leaves tonight and after two days, she's already booked to go to Turkey for a conference. And uh, that's why I say God is taking her on higher grounds. And thank you so much, Daddy. She asked for prayer. Praise the Lord. We use you as a point of contact. Lord, you are so good. What a loving God you are. Father, we pray for your daughter, Abia. Jesus, you know, we know where she's coming from. You are a good God. Father, she will succeed. Amen. You will cover her. Amen. She will be a crowd puller. Amen. And many will listen to the voice of God in her life. Amen. Listen to me, you demon on assignment. She has been delivered and nothing you can do. She will speak the word like Paul the Apostle. Amen. She will go places and she will win soul for Christ. Amen. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Sister Apia and I want to give God the glory because his word is true. His word has never failed. Whatever he says will come to pass. If there is anybody that has given us real trouble, was that our daughter? Hmm. We tried everything, but we resort to prayer. Who said prayer can? Prayer is the walking stick of a disciple. You carry it anywhere you go. And when God arrested her, <laughs> nobody could stop her. 
They tried to stop her. <laughs> he said, no way. Today she is an evangelist for Christ. Amen. She will go places. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's call on Sister Abimbola Oladipo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, when Sister Atone came to my side and said, Yeah, write your name, you have a testimony. <laughs> I first said, What is it? I don't have any testimony. Then God reminded me of one. Sister Lala and I were coming back from work during this week, oh, the past week, I'm not sure, the particular, this week. And just before we got home, we we're right in front of the house and she asked, should I park downstairs or should I park in front of the house? And I just said, I was the one driving, not her, I was the one driving. And I said, will you just park up instead of going down? Then without even looking back or checking whether a car was coming, I just matched the brake hand and I just heard, heard this screech behind me. And I looked back, I'm like, God, what just happened? We parked and you know, both of us were like, hey, what just happened? God. Then we both went back and we were checking the back of the car. In my mind, like, hey, if this car had hit us from behind, the back of the car would have just been right over. And the Holy Spirit was like, hey, hey, you are looking at the back of the car. Do you know what would have happened? Then the Holy Spirit just replayed it back in my mind. If that car had hit us at that speed that it was coming, it would have, first of all, sent the car, you know, push it forward with that, with that force. Maybe uh, spinal cord. Something would have just, I'm sure I would not be here today. And you know, because God knew that God, is only God that can, un, that understood the magnitude of what he saved us from. Every day he keeps reminding me what would have happened. I'll just remember, thank God I'm not in the hospital. I'll just remember, thank God I'm still working. Thank God my back is not broken. You know, because that is what the devil had planned. But well, we're grateful to God that we are both here today. We're not taking the grace of God for granted at all. So we're grateful to God. Help us thank God. Hallelujah. I'll be a better... We were coming back from work. We want to park our car. A high speed car was coming. It almost hit us behind. But Jesus told him, Come on, stop. Oh. You cannot stop. The power of God is a greater power than the devil's power. It cannot touch the children of God. Oh, they just wait on the The power of God is a great power. It cannot touch you when you are covered. Come on, sing it, sing it. You say I should help you to thank my God. I am doing it now. Jesus save you. No spinal cord was broken none will be broken in jesus name forever you will walk like god created you at times when god delivers us from accident we don't know we're going out with my wife where were we going we're coming for faith clinic and the traffic light, they stopped us and a delivery motorcycle was by our side. When the traffic light passed us, we moved. And he did, uh, what did he do? He drew like, uh, one leg was like this and he was turning with speed. And then another vehicle was coming with high speed from another road. 
that vehicle was wrong, it's supposed to stop before he joined the express. The next thing we hear, he jacked that thing up in our front, landed him, and we had to stop. We could have climbed him. The whole thing scattered everything. You know what? That kind of thing had to happen. The man was confused. He didn't know where he was going. But thank God he was alive. The woman who was driving the diplomatic vehicle was also confused. I had to come down and go to her. Relax. Call. He said, which do I call? 911. People came and lifted up the mind. It could have been us. It could have been double wahala. Hit him and put him in our front and we climb. Faith clinic could have basara. But God, the devil has been on rampage and he will never win in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Spinal cord care. No way. Yes, that's what the devil planned. Cannot happen in our time in Jesus' name until Jesus returns. Sangi, the prayer warrior. Let's call her. Let her give us a testimony. sharing today is uh, about last month, but there was no time because we have guests and there was something going on and there was no testimony. So today I'm taking the opportunity, so few na names are written here, so I give it the last, my name. It is about a little boy, Brian, called Brian. Do you remember last month? Uh, who, five years old, who fell down in the well do you remember that? Yeah, in Morocco, in Morocco, and the whole world, even in the international news, they were showing, and they were screening all the time, live telecast was given, yes. That was the boy. I felt so sad for him, such a little boy, young boy, not knowing what to do in the small cave, or in the small well, and uh, to shorten, the, st um, to shorten the, uh, the testimony, it was, uh, Friday night and I was watching television and I was so sad for him and all of a sudden my son came. Mom, can you pray for this boy? I said, okay, I will pray. But um, not suddenly I pray. So before, before I go to bed, I go to the toilet and then in the toilet I just talk to God, Lord, I feel so sorry for this boy and are you going to save him? Like this, I just talk to him. And I heard a voice, a soft, tender voice from in the bathroom. And he said to me, uh, Jesus said, huh? In the bathroom, I'm saying, huh? I look back, and I was not really not going to pee. Even at that time, I was looking around in the bathroom, and Jesus said, you know, in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, maybe the pastor knows today, um, it's written, you will hear a small, gentle voice. Go this way, that way. You know, this always I hear the sound, gentle, soft voice from ever since I came to Jordan. Not all the time, but sometimes I doubted myself. Even I consulted the doctor, the pastors before Pastor Sam and all came. But they said, yes, yes, yes. I, they, I do not know where it is written in the Bible, but I found out that is in the book of Isaiah, but I don't remember now. Elohim, uh, whatever. So I went to the bed and I prayed, Lord, are you going to save him? What is the meaning of Jesus saves? I know that you are a savior. Are you going to save him? I keep talking to him. I always talk to him before sleeping. I talk to him. Are you going to save this little boy? Because they are Muslim. They don't know you. They, we can pray for them, but our prayer really reached their heart and uh, just Jesus saves. That's all. Anyway, I prayed for him, and I, I prayed for him again, and I went to bed. 
early in the morning I came, my son dropped me as usual. You know that my son, we always pray for him. He is not a believer yet. Uh, he always dropped me. So I came to the church. It was raining like anything. And uh, I don't know, the first prayer that I pray as I enter, I said, Lord, my son always dropped me. But he never likes to come in the, inside the church. But he always dropped me wherever. He dropped me and take me wherever meeting I go. He, he is always there for me. But he himself never liked to go inside. So I almost kneel down here in this, uh, where I sit. And um, I prayed for him. And then the, another voice, Sonny, do you remember the prodigal son, the older one? Okay, what, 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 what am I doing? I'm in the church right now. Um, I saw me, and I said, yes. In my heart, I was thanking Lord, and I, you know, as usual, when you enter the church, you praise God, and you commit the, the uh, whatever, whatever. You committed the program, but the Lord spoke to me again, saw me. The, 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 what he's saying, remember the prodigal son, the older one. I said, okay, I do remember. He is always there. He is always waiting. But he is not here inside. So in my heart, it is better to be in the courtyard. What? Better in well, a thousand elsewhere. Yes, I forgot. I got confused. And then I keep still talking, talking to God, and I said, Lord, last night you told me Jesus saves. Now here I am in the church. What is the meaning of Jesus saves? And still I was praying, and then the Lord showed me, guess what? He showed me bulldozer, the people, uh, the, the ambulance, and the people, many people are praying in their own way. That's what I saw here in the church in a vision. So what does that mean? And then, not no, no more voice now, but in my heart, that how important one life is. What about the lost soul around us? That's, that's it. That is the meaning. That is the meaning. For one little boy, five-year-old, ambulance, the president, the, the whatever team from far and near, they come to rescue one child what about the other okay this is what the lord uh, remind me to pray more and more for the lost soul now every single day i pray i do pray yes honestly i do really pray for everyone but now i pray harder and harder and one life is so important what about the lost soul right now we are in you know then all the news around the world this is it Sometimes it is, uh, um, what, what can I say? Um, I don't go out much like before. Uh, not like before. I cannot go because I'm a grandma. And God bless me. Another one is coming soon. Oh. And so I'm taking care of the house. But really, really, God knows. I am praying for every uh, every one of you, I don't know your name, all of you, because I cannot remember people's names. Yes, I know this, Sister Sarah. Um, I don't go out like before. Right back in 1989, 1991, no, 19, I was in India at that time. Uh, all over Mafra, all over Mafra. In the Zarka, I was also in Zarka. You know the Zarka? And, and then Akaba with Pastor Sam. And, uh, now it is, uh, I'm not resting, but the more I spend time with God, the more he talks to me. So now with sisters and brothers, I want to encourage you again to tell you this year is really, really important. So many lost souls are, uh, so many souls are lost and they are dying. They, are, they have been deceived by teaching. And Ramadan is also coming. Hallelujah. And this morning when I came, my son he was putting all, you know, all kinds of music. I don't want this kind of music when I'm in there, in the car. And so he stopped. So I, I told him, that you, cannot close, you cannot close your eyes, but I'm going to pray. So right from my home to the, to the gate, I was praying, and I thank the Lord. But my son is really, really good. So every one of you, 
I ask you to pray for him. His name is Asa, in, in English, Jesus. Amen. So please Amen. pray for him. Hallelujah. My two daughters are okay. They are fine. Amen. My son and his wife are not believers. And they are fasting also. They are going to... The Lord will know, touch them sure. in the name of Thank Jesus. You. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord answer that prayer. It's been on us, prayer, and the Lord will turn this life around very, very soon. Very soon in the name of Jesus. Very soon in the name of Jesus. I got a message there. The kings, everybody, ambulances, everything, waiting for that small, that soul. The king that doesn't even know God. And we, how many souls have you really followed up like that? Just one boy. Ambulance, bulldozers, everybody. Cameraman, same boy. But you are the cameraman of Jesus. How many souls are you watching? But rather we destroy them. God is calling us back today with that word. Praise the Lord. Finally, we call on Pastor Mrs. Sarah Kana. So. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The Lord is good and he's ever faithful. Uh, a lot of things have happened the past few uh, days. In fact, the day we God saved us from that accident, in fact, when that car hit that dispatch rider, it was, he fell right in front of us. The blessing is that God did not allow us to be on speed, even though we would have just crushed him. But God saved him and saved us. And the following day, the devil was on rampage. My son called us very early in the morning. You know, their time was in the afternoon. I mean, their own morning, it was our evening. And... The mower was mowing their garden around. You know, they live in an estate, so the estate pays them for it. So, and then suddenly, they thought it was the blade from the mowing machine. Went up and hit the window right where the wife was lying down, where she was walking from. She walks from home. And she just screamed. If that thing had broke the window, but the window had a second layer. Thank God, is this double layer window. It was a single glass he would have just finished her face or kill her because it was right there where she was. And he called us. And I'm just like, God, I thank you. You're always there for us. The devil is on rampage. And that was the very morning in prayer rain that we were praying. We were asked to pray for family. He said, stand up, join your hands and pray for your children. Prophesy into the lives of your children. Please, for those of us that are here to join prayer rain, Please get the link from Daddy and join that morning prayers. It is amazing. I want to also thank God for Edith Young Ita, the son of mommy, our brother's uh, here, his brother, that was lost for years. When she came, that was a prayer request as a first timer, and later on she confided in me that, please, pray for this, my son. So I took it up in prayer rain. Every morning, because we have a prayer request, I used to lift him up in prayer rain. And just a few days ago, I remembered his name and I went back. I'm like, God, please do something about it. It's young's life. I don't know where he is. Whatever it is, locate him. Just a few days ago. So when she said it, I was almost in tears. Because I know that this week has been prophesied into the lives of your children. We have been praying for our children. And today she stands to give that that testimony. And I want to thank God that this April is another April. Hallelujah. It's my best month. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It was also the month that the devil came to sniff life out of me when I had this accident. It was a nasty one. And for like three consecutive years after I had that accident, I was having accident repeatedly on the same date I had the first accident. But God saved my life. The devil really mean me. And I really mean him. 
because as long as he's after me, I'm also after him. I'll keep knocking on his head. I'll keep by beating him on my legs. This leg he doesn't want. I'll walk and march him and destroy him and all his evil works. Praise the Lord. So I stand here to glorify the name of the Lord that God did not allow us to weep again in the month of March. Last year it was a horrible year for us in March. We lost one of my grandsons and it was a nasty one. And the month of March again, the devil came to take the mother's life and God overcame him. And this month is the month of April, my birth month. I just want to thank God and say, a share be teti bere. A share be te bade. A do pe o jesu. be se. of us that don't understand that song says thank God for where he has brought me from. Thank God for where he has taken me to now and thank God for where he is taking me to. That is my testimony today. I want to glorify his name for his mercy over me and my family. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank God that you are walking today. Isn't it um, something mysterious that um, on the same day she had this accident, consecutively on that same day, accident will happen. The last time that accident happened, that day was in a Friday. She's supposed to go to work. I told her today you're not going to work. Say, stay at home. Let me see how that devil will come to your home. And it was the last Friday of the month. It was a night vigil back in Nigeria. And I said, you know me. Well, I would like to go to church early to arrange for the church service. I said, oh, yeah, let's go. Let me see how that devil will come and meet you in this car. She said, you stayed at home. He didn't come and see you. Enter my car. Let us go to church. Say that I will come later, please. Just wait. You go. Uh, I said, me and you, we are going in this car. He said, please, I cannot come. Okay. I had to go and arrange church. While I was in the church, she had the accident while they were coming. Just at the gate, the person who was carrying him, her carrying her, saw a car. I went to hit the car. Just for that accident to happen. I said, sure, you are coming. And when she came for that night, we said, today, we brought a, a visiting minister. And he didn't know what was going on. And he just spoke. He said, there have been a recurring thing in somebody's life. Today, it has come to an end. Amen. Just word. There is power in the world. One day, we'll make, I will minister to us on the power in the world. And that's how it ended. The next year was the day he was coming here. I said, ah, again, in the air? No way. We prayed, and she landed safely. And she's, since that day, that covenant has been cancelled. I stand and I speak to your life. Every occurrence, evil covenant in your life is cancelled today in Jesus' name. This month, the Lord will take you out of that bondage. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray for those who were born in the month of 
March and April. Because those of March did not cut their cake. They will cut their cake together with those born in the month of April. So bring in the cake. If you were born in the month of March and in the month of April, please come forward. Those who were born in the month of March and April, please come forward. Amen. Oh, my daughter's birthday is this month? April. Oh, that's great. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to thank God for this day. And um, we will call Brother Elias to come forward and pray for them that the Lord will bless and every plan of the devil against their destiny will be cancelled. When we finish praying, then they will cut the cake. Pray for them. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day that you have created. Thank you for each and every one. Wonderfully made, Lord. Your works are good. But when this man says it's very good, thank you, Lord. I pray that voice of rejoicing will be their lives. Amen. Voice of weeping will stop. Amen. I pray, Lord, that you will favor them. Amen. You will taksu them, Ya Rab, in your favor. Yod. Restore everything that they have lost. Yeah. Restore their lives that they have seen. Isaat wa khasarat ya Rab. Rajihim Rab, so they will be glad all the days of their lives. Let their endeavor be their endeavor be successful. Keep the works of their hands. Keep the works of their hands, Lord. Let their children, Lord, Amen. Your glory, Lord, over their children. Yes, Jesus. Lord, let all, like the old, the Israelites, Lord, their enemies will drawn. In the, Dead sea, in the Red Sea, Lord. Amen. So all their enemies will be drawn. Jesus. And will hear always Lord's voice of rejoicing. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for what you are going yes, in their lives. Thank you for what you are doing in yes, their Jesus. lives. Thank you for what you are preparing for the future. Yes, Jesus. In strengthen them from the inner man, Lord. Amen. So that they Jesus can dwell in their hearts. Yes, Jesus. And their roots will grow deep down into the Father's love and will be made strong. Amen. And will be a blessing to all those who are around us because you have made them in this life, in this time, in this place to be a blessing. Thank you, Lord, because we don't covet, because we are blessed. You have taken all the curses on the cross. We are blessed. We cannot covet. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings we have in Jesus', Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We join hands and we put um, uh, Bredin, born on April 12th, and we also put Gelly, born on March 19th, and Mercy in, on April 17th, all from Facebook. We pray for them as well. The Lord will set to you. The Lord will visit you. The blessings of the Lord will be upon you all. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. So please, can you hold the cake as we declare for you to cut? Please hold yourself, everybody. Make sure you touch somebody because the Almighty God, when you hear the word S in Jesus, because the power of God will come upon those who are holding that knife, and as you cut, the Lord Almighty will visit you in the name of Jesus. J E S U S. Praise the name of the Lord. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you all. May the good Lord bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's rise up and pray as we listen to the word of God. Praise the Lord. I hope the technical is ready for the... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you for what you are about to do and what you have been doing. We give you all the praise, all glory, all honor and adoration. That it is time for us to listen to your word. And we ask that you will speak to us. Father, let your word have entrance into our life. Any entrance that has been blocked, that will not allow your word to pass through, we speak to that gate and we ask it to open up that the word of God will have entrance into our life and will do that which you have planned right from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I want to welcome you us all again to today's uh, service. Quickly, today is a Thanksgiving service. And um, I want to talk about Thanksgiving as well. I titled this message, God Deserves Our Thanksgiving. God deserves our thanksgiving. Many a time God has been requesting from us to give him thanks, but we discover that we don't thank God the way we supposed to. But today, we want to see the areas that we have been neglecting or be not been giving God thanks so we are going to take our Bible reading from Isaiah chapter one, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. It says, now will I sing to my well-beloved. Everybody says sing. God has been speaking to us and can speak to us in many ways. And when he starts singing, you need to pay great attention because there's something he wants to pass. That is why he made it possible that songs, praise, are what he loves most. So now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved. And what is he singing about? Touching his vine yard. Touching his vineyard. He said, he's telling us the story now. My well beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Please, I want every distraction, anything that will distract you to stop right now. Ushers, please, everybody, wherever you are, return because it's time for us to listen to the word. My well-beloved had a vineyard. Who is God's well-beloved that he's talking about? Hmm? 
Jesus Christ is talking about the God the Father is talking about Jesus Christ now had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill who is the vineyard? the church of God God has built his church in a very fruitful hill amen praise the Lord and he said, my well-beloved had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And what did he do? He fenced it. What is that? Security. He fenced it and gathered out the stones, removed obstacles. Anything that to distract or disturb you. And planted it with choicest vines, the best of vines. Choosing you, giving every one of us, apostles, singers, pastors, every one of you have talent. And build a tower in the midst of it. After fencing it round, you build a tower. That is, a tower is where the security people will stand and watch in case enemy is coming. That tower is for purpose of knowing that is, he has given you anointing, given you ears to listen, given you eyes to see, spiritual eyes to see. And also made a wine press therein, in the same place, where you can get those fruit, the vines, and then press it. And get, You don't need to go anywhere. You don't need to spend transport there. He said he made it there for you to bring out the, the, the juice God made, in short, what he's telling us, he has made a place comfortable for us. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes. Amen? That it should bring forth grapes. What, what did he bring? Wild grapes. Praise the name of the Lord. Instead of that grapes, he brought wild grapes. Amen? And I want us to look at what is this grape. When you look at the vineyard, you see that the vine itself does not bring the fruit. What brings the fruit? is a branch. And Jesus Christ says, I am the true vine and you are the branches. I am the true vine and ye are the branches. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now when you look at a different version, he said, now I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. And then my beloved had a vineyard on a rich and a fertile hill like brother Gee was telling us today, you sow a seed, no matter how good that seed is, if you don't sow it on a fertile ground, you are wasting time. And that is why we need to be careful where we sow a seed. Praise the name of the Lord. So, before we look at this, who is this vineyard that has been so decorated and protected. He's talking about when you I want you when you go back home, I want you to read the whole of that. You will see next time we'll talk about what God decided to do to that vineyard that did not produce fruit. You see, when you look at the vineyard well decorated, can you see how it is lined? When you look at the one we have here in Jordan, let's look at we used to have one down there. One thing you should know about this grape is that every plant that grows brings out flower. Am I right? Before it brings, it takes process. But this one, does it bring out flower? We never see flower. It's a special tree and that's why God is using it to compare. You don't need, God has given us the grace. You don't need to start producing flowers. Once you are attached to Jesus, he has given you all that it takes to just bring that fruit. You don't need to go to the process of flowering and coming out. That is the only thing I know that does not bring out flower. 
Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says in John 15 verse 5, John 15 verse say, I am the vine. That's Jesus speaking. And ye are what? The branches. So we want to look at what God is talking about. Where, who, is, who is this vineyard that God has so decorated? Remember we are talking about God deserve our thanksgiving. And he that abided in me and I in him, the same bring, get forth much fruit. Not just fruit, much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do nothing. So the vineyard comprises of you attached to Jesus with different talents as specified in the book of Ephesians. Amen? The vineyard comprises of you. And without Jesus, there is no vineyard. So it's you that you are the branches and attached to Jesus. And in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10, it says, So Christ came down and he is the same one who did what? Went up. And he went up above the highest heaven in order to fill everything with himself. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you go to verse 11, he says, And that same Christ gave this gift to people. He gave gifts to people. He made some to be who? Apostles. Some to be prophets and some to go and tell the good news. That's evangelists. Like Abia is going out now. And some to care for and to teach God's people. Everybody has been given talent. And so God has really decorated us and given us everything that we need to be able to function properly in his household. But the question is, are we doing exactly what God has called us to do? Praise the Lord. Now, who is speaking here? This is God the Father speaking to God the Son as mediator and head of the church on the matter that affects the church. He's talking about something that has effects in the church. That is why he says, my beloved has a vineyard. And he's talking about the church of God. And who, are, who is the church of God? Is it this building? No. You and I, the church of God. So God is talking about the church. He's explaining what is happening in the church of God. And he says, surely... It is the father which had given to his dear son the church. And that is what God is saying. And the church here is the vineyard. Amen. And the church is here called the vineyard. He is the only beloved of the father full of grace and truth. So now that you know that is what he's talking about that. My well-beloved had a vineyard. And he expected this vineyard to bring out grapes. Nice grapes like you have seen on the picture. It can bring out red. It can bring out white. Different. That is why you see blacks. People all over the world. You see white. Red people. That is why you see white grape. So God does not make mistake when he uses this grape to describe his own people. You saw red grape there. You also see white ones. Praise the name of the Lord. So God has created you. He said, I'm using you so that you won't say, when it is red grape, you will say, no, he's talking about black people only. When it is white, you say he's talking about white people. No, you have white grape and red grape, which is black. And he, the Lord is telling us that we are the vineyard that he has created, decorated, put in place, giving us security 
and given us all that it takes, protected us. But are we actually appreciating God for what he has done? And I want us to take note of how God speaks to the church and the blessing he has bestowed upon the church. First, it talks about a situation in a very fruitful hill. In a place, I can see a lot of us today, you are not in Ukraine. A lot of us today, you are not the father or mother of that child that fell into the well. How do you think you will feel? When they took the picture of that child, he's still there. How do you think the mother and fathers will feel? And at the end, the child came out, did not die, he died. But look, let me ask you, you are just forget about that. You are the father and the mother of that child. And that child is still there. Are you not? I sent something to every one of us today about a man that a, a, the mother asked the boy, go and clean the fridge. He just went to clean the fridge. He didn't put it off. As he was cleaning the fridge, he electrocuted him and he died. He died. By the time they take him to the hospital, a few minutes after, when the father knew that he had died, he too died. That's the boy of 19 years old. And the father died when he heard that the son too had died. Do you know that is, that is how God feels? When people are dying without Christ and you are enjoying yourself, you think God is holding us responsible. That means we are not giving thanks to God. We are not appreciating God for what he's doing. Oh, I'm saved. So other people should go and die. By you not doing, living in obedience to the word of God, you are, first God is talking about a very fruitful hill. God has given you a very comfortable place to stay by you being saved. Secondly, it talks about the security from enemies of every kind. It's world around. COVID came, for God's sake, you are still alive. Many of us were attacked. Today, the people have been still been attacked by COVID. Even though the government is lifting ban and saying no more, but are you do you think it has gone? I don't know. But today you are alive. That is the security that God has given to you. But what have you done with that? Have you appreciated God? Many of us think that uh, maybe. The, way we, the only way we appreciate God is to come to his house, dance, praise him, jump up. No. There are many ways that we can appreciate this, our God. Amen? Praise the name of the Lord. So, we can see. Amen? So the third one is totally, it talks about the soil. I hope we can project it up for me. Thirdly, the soil in which it was placed, like we talked today, a soil is a place where you can sow a seed. It de- this, for the seed to grow, it depends on the soil that you put that seed. You can be a very good evangelist. You can be a very good seed, but without finding a good place to sow your seed, the seed will be wasted. The soil in which it was placed, all the stones being gathered out of it for this to be able to grow, for the, for the plants to come out well. And lastly, the choiceness of the vine. It talks about the choiceness of the vine. Praise the name of the Lord. Next slide, please. Now, what I want us to do, I want us to think of the grace, the love, the mercy, and the favor of all the persons of the Godhead towards us as a church. 
which God has given to us. Love, mercy, and favor. And the wine press and the tower building it as so many further proof of the divine love. God protected us, shielded us, gave us security. I want you to look at your life and check where you are coming from. Brethren, there are so many of us today, if they ask you to go back to your country, would you like to go back? You will not like. You prefer where you are. Because we love peace. Am I right? We love a place where you will be comfortable. No, no, no. Okay. Um, if you are from Medugri, you have to go back tonight. Let me just mention Medugri. The very place where Boko Haram is fighting. He would like to go back. Or maybe there is a very big storm, like I saw one of the storms in Florida yesterday, and they say you are from Florida, go back to Florida. When the storm is, would you like to go back? No. But you see, God has built security around you. And are we actually appreciating this God for what he is doing? And that is why God wants us to look and say, find where you are not giving thanks to God. Oh, it's not the dancing, by God. Please. It's not the dancing. It's not the jumping and worshipping God. Fine. That is good. Very, very good. Very good. Nothing strong about it. But what of other things? In all that God has done for us, he expects a thanksgiving offering of fruit bearing. But we have neglected this part. Do you know when you win souls, when you bear fruit, you are thanking God. Because God says when your fruit remains, it is then you can ask him for anything and he will do it. Am I communicating? But you win soul, you get fruit, no problem, it's good. But that fruit must remain. What do we mean by fruit remaining? That fruit must multiply, bring in more other fruit. That means they must be followed up. Thanksgiving is not only coming to church and sing and dance, like I said. It has to do with a lot of things. Praise the name of the Lord. So where the fruit you are going to show to God from all this protection, provisions, and comfortable environment, where is the fruit? That is where God is asking you. With all that he has done for you. And the fruit can also be when the lockdown came, what were you doing with that lockdown? You see the opportunity to complain. Many people complain. I saw many people who were ready. They said, God, please, once you just open up again, I'm going to serve you honestly. God, I'm going to do great work for you. But immediately the, the lockdown was lifted. Come and see wild party. People say, oh, is this me? They have forgotten the promises they made to God. God is, you cannot mock God. Cannot mock God. So let's look at the thanksgiving that God is getting from us. From all the good he has done. We'll look at Isaiah chapter 5 verse 2b. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes. And it brought forth what? Wild grapes. What do we mean by this wild grapes? We can get it in, that's Matthew 21. Next slide, please. I want us to look at what is talking about this wild grapes. Here another parable. Remember we were reading Isaiah chapter 5 verse 1. He said I will sing a song of my well beloved of the vineyard. Now in Matthew 23 Jesus is saying here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard. Mark this word the same thing. Am I communicating? And hedged it round about and digged a wine press. Is it the same wine press? Jesus is coming to confirm it. 
in it and build a tower. Did you see a tower in the other one? Isaiah has said it long. And Jesus is confirming it, ringing it in our ears that we should continue to hear. And build a tower and let it out to a husbandman. And went into a far country. Next slide, please. And what did he see? And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandman that they might receive the fruit of it. Please, where is Pastor Mrs. Sarah and Kana? Praise the name of the Lord. That they might receive the fruit of it. And the husbandman took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the thanksgiving that he received. That is the thanksgiving he received. Please move on to the next slide. Just bypass that particular. Yes, go to the one, the next one. Now, look at the privileges, the church of God, you and I. What have we done with the souls God has trusted in your hands? And that is what God is asking us. Yes, it is good. You have led them to Christ. But what is their level now? Where are they now? So let me show you exactly what Christ expects from us. And I want to let you know, we are going to the next slide now, what Christ expects from us in a place where we need to give thanks to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Number one, we need to have genuine love for God and his people. For us to be able to say, God, thank you for all these things you have done for us, we need to go back to our first love. Genuine love for God and his people. You cannot say you love God and you hate or despise the people he sent to you to take care of. So you must love them because Romans chapter 12 from verse 9 and 10 Romans chapter 12, 9 and 10, he said, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Am I communicating? Really love them. What I'm saying now is for every one of us to take home and begin to put it into practice. Because if we must fulfill God's mandate, we come to church, we listen, but we don't put it into practice. We don't do what God wants us to do. We just come and we listen to message. It has been good. That was the message today. Oh, wonderful. Pastor preached a message on uh, love. Oh, great. But what have you done about it? I want us to begin to practicalize what God is saying. Because the time is short. He said, love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Praise the name of the Lord. And then in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, which is the song my children used to sing in those days. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. And everyone that hated is born of the There's no two way about it. When he, there, there are many ways in showing this love. And verse 8 says, he that loveth not, knoweth not that God is love. When, when you read it from NLT, let's look at the NLT side of it. He said, dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God. So if you don't love and you come to church... No matter how you sing, no matter how you preach like me, if you don't love, you are not a child of God. You are just wasting your time. I'm telling you, this is what God is telling us. 
I can preach this gospel and then I see somebody outside, he's suffering and I cannot take care of him. Oh, but I pray for him, go, God will bless you. I am a fake pastor because the love of God is not there. Or you see somebody because the person is from a different church and you cannot help the person because he's from a different church, you are a fake pastor. Because God did not say there is no church in heaven. All what God is looking at is that soul. Like Sister Sangi told us, that boy was in the well. The king doesn't know him. The ambulance driver, they don't know him. The bulldozer, they don't know him. But they knew that somebody was there. But they had to take that person out. God used that to portray, to show us something. If those people can go for one soul, the whole country... Go for one soul. How much more? A very precious soul that is going to miss heaven. What are you doing? But anyone who does not love does not know God. John 13, 35 says, By this, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If you do what? If you do what? So if God says, is by your love that they will know you are the... So if you don't love, forget about portraying yourself as a disciple of Christ. You are a fake. So let's take note of that, children of God. And I pray this morning that we'll begin to show love to people, no matter where they come from, whether they come from a religion you hate so much, whether they come from another church, or where you must love them first. Love is number one. Amen? Am I communicating to somebody this morning? When you go out there, look, at, look for somebody. But as we do that, we need to be also careful because there are some people, you help them today, tomorrow they will come for more. We need to. That is why our spiritual antenna must be. At number two, mutual honor. This is what God expects from us. Mutual honor. Romans chapter 12 verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly word love. In honor preferring one another. Where we are going and NLT says and take delight in honoring each other. Take delight in honoring each other. What this is telling us here is to appreciate contribution of others, not condemning them. No matter the little contribution, even if it is cleaning this floor, somebody comes to clean. Please appreciate that person. If it is, if it is just coming to church at all, entering this place, appreciate that person. A word of thank you will give that person in call. Do you know that people come to church, just a smile of the ushers there, give the person hope. It gives the person joy. The next day he will come back. There are many people who stay away from church because of your attitude, because of your behavior. They said I can never come to that church again. But people will come in there there was a church. I don't, I don't want to say particular church. Somebody came in and then the person, the ushers went, take the handbag, take everything and let the person to, hey, wait, wait, does, he started asking, did he know me somewhere? No, he doesn't know you. But he knows the God that brought you here. So you only worship that God is because that person belongs to Christ. Because God says, once you take care of the people on the street, you are, it's me, you are touching. Brett said, let's begin to practicalize this thing. This is what God wants. Amen? So everyone in the body of Christ, no matter how insignificant it might look to you, must be appreciated because it is important to God. It does not matter if it does not look important to you. But that person... Is very important to God. So, but when you downplay the unique contribution of others, what happens? You discourage the people from moving forward. They will not want to do again. 
When they make mistake, please don't capitalize on that mistake. See how you can build on that. You see, a lot of us seated here, a lot of my children that have grown, they are trained in workers' meeting in a small enclosure. I think my daughter Ophelia will talk about it more. Because only two of them. They are trained in that small place. And they make mistakes. I told them, make mistake here. One day, two of them, they will come and stand here and preach. I've told them. They will come here and stand. Because they are coming out. Make mistake, they be corrected. They are ready. To, they are people who are ready to hear. But it depends on how you love them. But when you keep on condemning them and telling you don't appreciate them, you don't honor them, you don't appreciate them, they will never want to come out. A child that makes mistake today, you beat, and you have to come back tomorrow, he will never come out again. Praise the name of the Lord. First Peter chapter 2, verse 17. First Peter 2, 17. Say, honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. How many honors do you see there? Two honors. Honor all men and honor the king. But fear God. See, when God is speaking, his word is very important. See, honor men. It means give honor to whom honor is due. As it's written in Romans chapter 3, 13 verse 7. He said, render therefore to all their dues. To all their dues. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Again, second honor. God wants us to honor people. God wants us to appreciate them. Don't push them away. Number three. Forbearance. Colossians 3. This is what God expects from us. Just a few things that God expects. Colossians 3, 12 and 13 says, put on therefore, hmm? put on therefore, as they who, he's not talking to unbelievers. He's talking to children of God, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of what? And again, again, humbleness of, and meekness, and what? What God is doing is repeating and bringing back the fruit of the spirit. If you don't have them, you have failed. Brethren, let's wake up. As I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. Let's wake up. As few as we are, if you go out and begin to put this into practice, you will see lives of people will change. And it says here, forbearing who? One another. And forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Next slide, please. Praise the Lord. Just go past that particular one. I want us to move faster. Now, what is forgiveness? Forgiveness has to do with administering pardon. But, forbearing is what? Creating an accommodation for that limitation because it might happen again. Are you, are you listening to me? That mistake might happen again. So when it happens again, what do you do with it? Do you throw that person away? No. God, see, the word of God is true. If, if we were to be thrown away, by now Jesus could have thrown us away. We, we couldn't have been anywhere. It's a person like me. How many times? How many times for God's sake? He could have thrown me away since. But he had patience. He said, move from forgiveness to forbearance. Yes, for, forgiveness is good. You have to graduate. Hey, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. But can you forbear? It's good. Now, Learn to forbear people rather than forgiving and casting away or destroying their life. God wants us from today as children of God for us to be able to make heaven. I've told us we have not been appreciating God. We come, we dance, we worship God, we sing songs, we pray. 
But God is telling us we are neglecting the most important thing. And from today, we need to make it to start happening in our life in the name of Jesus. So, we have to move from forgiveness to forbearance. Learn to forbear rather than casting them down. As far as Christ has not returned, hmm? as far as he has not returned, make frantic effort to accommodate them. Until Christ returns. Because the Bible says, seek ye the Lord while he may be, call upon him while he is, meaning that the time is coming when he will not be there. So please make frantic effort. Do it. See, in those days, I used to, when somebody continued in that, I said, what kind of thing is it? I'm tired though, but I'm not going to be tired again. Britain, let us not be tired. Because that person you see, if everyone has to be tired, the, the father of the prodigal son could have been tired. Do you see how he received the son when he came back? That means he was waiting for him, just like mommy's son came back. If he had, if, eh, let him go. He said, well, I have many, I have others, let him go. But the day he came back, look at he came to give testimony. That is how God is. And God wants us to do, wants us to do the same to all the souls that are going back to the world again and again with love, bring them back. Go back to that, to that slide. I've not finished with it. He said, create enabling environment for them to start a new life. And then, enabling environment is using another method. It might be the method you are using to bring them is not good enough. Use another method. There are a lot of methods you can use. Praise the name of the Lord. There are so many ways God has given us, and that is why go back to God, ask the Holy Spirit, and he will begin to speak to us. Number four, I think that's the last one. By interceding for one another. Interceding. For you to show your thanksgiving to God, intercede for one another. Pray for one another. Don't Condemn. I have been condemning people. I said, this one, I'm tired. How can? Every time. Look, I had people like that. They come to the church. We pray for them. Ah, I want to change. Immediately they leave here. Go and check Facebook. Before they even get home, they have already started. I mean, in the taxi. Hey. I will be discouraged. See the person that just confessed that I'm going to. But God said, follow them up. Don't be tired. You see, pastors are, is, as, are easily, they, they get, because you know, I, look, I have many people. Not only you guys. God wants, the people bought bulldozers, ambulances, because of that only one boy. The king gave order. And the king of kings is giving order to you. He said, move your bulldozers. That person that's falling into that pit, he said, go and bring that person out. It might be difficult. He said, go, I want you to bring it out. He said, but Lord, how am I going to do it? I have given you all that it takes. Love. And what else did I show you? Forbearance. Another thing, forgiveness. And then, prayers. It has sitting. Many of you who are in prayer rain, it's just lifting up prayer points. I was asking myself, God, all this kind of testimony, if COVID did not come and prayer rain is established, nobody will know. Where could they have been? I keep on thanking God anytime I listen to prayer rain. Praise the name of the Lord. Ephesians 6, 18 says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for who? All, all, all saints. Then in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1, he said, finally, dear brothers and sisters, we ask you to pray for us. Huh? Hello? 
Hello? This is a powerful servant of God. He is already made. He's strong. He said, pray for us. Why? Pray that the Lord's message will spread rapidly and be honored wherever it goes. Just as when it came to you. Huh? Just like when it came to you. Don't receive it. Pray. Next slide. And he said, pray to that we will be rescued from wicked and evil people. See, every wickedness upon one child of God is, if you don't pray for him to be rescued, he will come to you. If you think that you are free, oh, hey, thank God. Ukraine, you see the war is in Ukraine. Ha! It will reach you. So we need to pray. Am I communicating? Is the economy not affecting the whole world today? Verse 3, but the, Lord's is the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil ones. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Next slide, please. And then why is the prayer important for all? Because number one, like I said today, if you are Elisha, get ready because your Jezebel is coming. Jezebel, Elisha performed miracles. Call fire from heaven. I mean, sorry. Elijah, yes. He called fire from heaven. And then, only one small thing that happened. He started panicking. But Haman, Mordecai, Haman was not meant for Mordecai alone. He was meant for who? The entire Jews. So when the Jews were looking, he said, Mordecai, it's your own trouble. If you like worshiping him. Everybody was saying, Mordecai, <laughs> he was trying to get him to that he would reach all the Jews. Why did they try to kill Jesus? It was because of you and I. Why are they trying to bring down that brother or sister see, to rubbish the image of God? So if you think that you are free, you better rise up because that is why we need to pray the problem of one christian is a problem of is a problem of all so brethren until we attain the unity of faith and until we spend time to pray for one another there is no way we can win this battle because we are living in this unity. God wants us to pray. Ephesians 14, 13. That's the last passage we'll read today. He said, Till we all come in the unity of faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man. Unto the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. Until then, no one is perfect. If you think you have arrived. <laughs> Be careful because your Haman is coming. If you think you have arrived and that you can call fire, go and ask Elijah what happened to him. What did he do? He ran. Am I communicating? He was the same person that called fire, but he ran. Today, God wants us to look at the area we have failed. Today he's not talking to unbelievers, he's talking to believers. And I know every one of us seated here, we are all children of God. How many souls have you won? Oh, but pastor, we cannot give tracts, we cannot preach, we cannot talk to people. Hello? Hello? Yes, I agree with you, you cannot talk to people. But do you know there are several better ways you can win souls than just going to talk to somebody? Do you know that you can even preach to somebody, the person will slap you on your face. Will slap you. And then you will ask, why do you slap me? He say, is it not you that I saw doing the same thing you are asking me not to do? When you live a clean life, the Bible says, let your light so shine before men. And they will see your good works and glorify your father. Our prophet today, who's apostle today, who came to minister to us during workers meeting. 
mention things like that. I will close with this story. Many years ago, we heard a story of when we were, we were being trained on how to evangelize. And I grew up in the northern part of my country where you cannot just evangelize like that. Just like here. And then we suddenly, as we were passing, the person gave tract to a man who was passing. He just beat the track off his hand and uh, went away. And the person just turned. As he was running, thinking that the person is going to pursue him, to come and fight him, the person bent down, picked his track, cleaned it, and started going. When the one that beat the track down turned and saw him, he said, he didn't pursue me. He went back. He said, excuse me. I, you did not even, he said, no. He saw him very peaceful. He didn't answer. He said, what makes you to be peaceful? He said, the Jesus I wanted to give you in this tract taught me to be peaceful. The message he did not want to reach, he listened to it. And he gave his life to Christ. The founder of this church, Redeemed Christian Church of God, He did not know how to read and write. Not even his own language that he can read, write very well. But he saw a tract that was printed by another denomination of a church. He picked it and said, ah, if we print this tract more, it will win many souls. He went and printed tracts upon tracts and then started giving it out. So when the church that originally owned the tract discovered it, they called him. Why did you do this? He said, ah, I did it too because many souls are won. He said, go and bring all the tract. They burnt it. They burnt. So that since that day, it became so, it felt so bad. This thing was in his heart. Then one day, the founder of the church died. He said he was, Pastor Deboya has come, has announced to the people, well, his, his papa is gone. People were started crying, they were preparing. Suddenly, he came back to life. When he came back, ah, Papa has woken up again. I said, ah, take me to the committee of that church. I want to go and see them. He said, why? He said, because God sent me back. The thing that he was doing was not a good, was not a good thing, but they burnt the trash. And he has right to be angry, am I right? But God said, you cannot enter heaven because you hold them in your heart. He said, go back to them and tell them you've forgiven them. He had to go back and call them and say, I'm sorry. The day you burnt the track that I was using for evangelism, ah, I held you in my heart. But today I've come to say, I'm sorry for holding you. I've forgiven you. He went back. A few days after, he went back. He died. Who is that person you are holding down? You may be very clean, very pure, very righteous, but one thing, as I was teaching my children yesterday, say you can be 99.9%. You cannot make it pure. I want you to bow your heads wherever you are. I want you to talk to God. I'm not going to call anybody out, come and give you, no, 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 no. It's a personal thing right now. Cry to God and I will cry to God. I give you some few minutes to talk to God. Please, let's pray. Tell God where you have missed it. We have heard the things that God wants us to do to be able to thank him, to show the thanksgiving by interceding for one another. We have heard that we have to forgive one another. We have to forbear one another. We have to have mutual honor. We must, as a matter of urgency, have genuine love. Do you have all this? Father, we want to thank you. Begin to pray. I want you to talk to God, please. Tell him where you have missed it. Father, we need your mercy. We need your mercy. Pray, cry to God. Tell him, yes, Lord, I have sinned. I need you now. Touch me, transform me. I took time to pass this message. Not minding that it's a Thanksgiving Sunday, a side service, but with God, you will do something in our life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' 
mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' name we pray. And so, my Father, I want to plead with you. Yes, even as I'm speaking, you have spoken to me through this word. We are all guilty. I beg you for mercy. From today onward, let us begin to put into practice the things we need to do, the things you have taught us, so that we'll be able to bring out that soul that is deep down there inside the pit. Father God, let's roll out our bulldozers. Let's roll out our ambulances. Let's roll out all the equipment. Let's begin to use our talent to bring out that lost soul so that the kingdom of God will be populated and the kingdom of darkness will be depopulated. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Can the saints say amen? God bless you. for our hand to our daddy who have given us the message today. Father, we thank you for the life of daddy. He's always a blessing to each one of us every time we speak here in the front. And we ask also daddy, God in heaven, that you will continue to bless him in every area of his life. Anoint him to do the work that you have entrusted into his care, God that this ministry here in this nation will continue to spread out in the name of Jesus. Bless his family, uh, his son, and bless this church, O Lord, who is blessing us so much spiritually and even physically in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Blessing time. Kingdom investment time, as Mommy said. Amen. So our, our, I want to share this um, verse in First Corinthians, First Corinthians, Second Corinthians nine six. It says in ECV, ESV. The point is this: whoever sows sparingly will also rope is reap sparingly. And whosoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. This morning, I have learned about sowing your seed in a good soil so that uh, you, will, you will benefit a lot from it. You will you'll be blessed. Amen. Soil. And then daddy preached vineyard. So it's it all connected. Amen. So if we sow sparingly, we also reap sparingly. And whosoever sows Whosoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So um, we have these envelopes, the tithes. If you have uh, going to give your tithes, that's, this is the envelope. And you can ask the, of the ushers to give you that. And offering and today's Thanksgiving. If you have a lot, to, if you have a lot uh, of Thanksgiving to get, give God for, this is the envelope. So we can package all our... Thanksgiving in time there. So, shall we sing this song as you package your. Hallelujah! Please let's rise to our feet. Yet you have substance to give what you can give God your dance, give Him your praise. He's worthy of it all. Amen. He's here to do my best. 
for our hands to this basket of offering that God will bless it and use it for the you uh, use it for the ministry in this nation and especially in this church and to where it reaches in the name of Jesus. God accept our offering, even our life unto you as an offering, uh, living sacrifice before you. We thank you, O oh God, for the privilege of giving back what's due to you in Jesus' name. And so, Father, thank you for everything that you have done in our life, given us the grace to give back. Thank you for the jobs that we have. Thank you, O oh Lord, for help so that we can work. We thank you, O oh Lord, for everyone who is here who has given cheerfully, not grudgingly, who sows bountifully. We thank you that you promise us that you will protect us as we give in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right, that one is for you. Praise the Lord. I expected everybody to be on their feet. The reason is that this is a new month. And we are praising God sitting down. We are praising my own father sitting down. He's not allowed. Praise. May his name be praised always in Jesus' name. Please let's be seated. Hallelujah. Do we have any first time in our midst this morning? No. Hmm. Hmm. We are not doing the work. Oh. Ah. May the Lord have mercy upon our lives in Jesus' name. If you are joining us online and today is your first time, please let us know. So that we can welcome you properly. Hallelujah. Announcement time. Announcement time. It shows I have good students in the house. Hallelujah. So, tomorrow is Sunday and we are going to start our weekly activities with house fellowship. Tomorrow, Sunday, house fellowship. Last week, we talked about strategies of lockdown. So this week, we are going to be talking about the role of the Holy Spirit in a lockdown. If you want to know more, if you want to learn more, join us tomorrow. From 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. We are going to be on Zoom, we are going to be on Facebook, and also on YouTube. If you have not been joining us, you are really, really missing a lot. Because from that house fellowship, you will learn more and you can ask questions. Also on Tuesday, is our Digging Deep starts from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. We are also on Zoom, on Facebook, and on YouTube. On Tuesday, we learn that the presence of God is very important in our lives. Sometimes we take the presence of God for granted. But when you come to these weekly activities, you will know more, you will learn more. So that when you want to pray, you will know how to direct your prayer to the Lord. Hallelujah. On Thursdays, our faith clinic starts from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. We meet here in person on Thursday. So we are also on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you can come here to the church, make sure you join us online. And this is a day that when you come, the Lord is here to answer your prayers. Bring your prayer request to him and he is here to attend to you. Hallelujah. Next week, Saturday, is going to be our celebration service. It starts with Sunday school. And today we talked about holy matrimony. So next week is going to be part two. And part two is saying communication is the priceless key. Communicate. So communication is the what? Is the priceless key. And budgeting is good. If you want to learn more, come. I'm only trying to give you, you know, the ink so that you can be here. Hallelujah. And all workers, please don't forget that you have a conference to join today 
our dad in the Lord is going to send us the link. So make sure you join by obeying the Lord. Hallelujah. And let's not forget our welfare box is outside there. You can drop checks there. You can put in your cash for the gospel of the Lord. Give us an open check. Don't worry. We know what to write. All is to what? To proclaim the glory of the Lord and to help the needy. Hallelujah. And all sisters, please wait after the service to see our mother in the Lord. Now, today we learned that we have a lot of assignments to do to find the lost souls. Give thanks to God always. He deserves our thanks and praise. I want you to look into someone's eyes beside you, behind you, in front of you, and say, Happy New Month. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's clap for the Lord as we welcome our Father in the Lord. Hallelujah. Ministry of Information, thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We want to thank you all for coming and thank you for your patience. And I know it will not be in vain. Today is always Thanksgiving and we stay, stay longer. So you're going home, you will go with a mirror. By the way, as I was seated there, I just received real joy in my spirit. And that God said, I should tell somebody you are going to receive joy. I, I, I am saying this, somebody will receive something that will give you real joy. I'm also receiving it for myself. Because some years ago, I came to the altar like this, not here, back home. And I was about ministering. And I had a very sharp pain on my leg. And I was crying to God. I said, but why is that pain on my Why should, I, should it be? Because there is somebody there that is having that pain. needs to be prayed. So I announced it. And the person has been crying since morning. He came to church. He was a worker. He came out. And immediately we prayed. That pain disappeared. So that joy I receive is for somebody. Amen. I don't know who that person is, but you will testify. Amen. This great joy that is coming to your life. In the name of Jesus I have my own testimony. You all have given your own testimony. So it's time for me to give my own testimony. Praise the name of the Lord. And my own testimony is all of you. And it goes this way, which I want to testify. Immortal, invisible, God only white, in light, in accessible, hid from his eyes, most blessed, most glorious the ancient of this almighty victorious thy great name we praise unresting unhesting and silent as light no wasting no wasting thou rulest in might thy justice like mountains Soaring above thy clouds, which are found of goodness and love. To all that thou givest, to both great and small, in all that thou livest, the true life of hope, we blossom and flow as leaves on the tree. I want us to take that number three again. To all life thou give, to both great and small, in all thou give, the true life of oh, we blow up and flourish as leaves on the tree, and we die and perish, but not change. So that is why in the last one, because we blossom and we flourish, but at the end we wither, we die, we go. 
but not change. Nothing changed our God. And that is why we come to the last verse and says, Great Father of glory, pure Father of life, thine adore thee, obey in their sight. All loud we will render, oh, help us to see this holy Brocha, Grimala, Brico Cipre Lida, Bru Masketa, Curian Drede, Luzi Brungu Zibra, Yeri Cataya Licremo, Rodo Simbre Catua, Eprendele Suta Cataya, Yegate Surema. Let's rise on our feet. Icremena. Luzu preta, chege tundere mindrale, lika seta, medegesa, marabo senderebe. You created us, you made us, you gave us this life. Satan came, wants to take it, but you cover us till day. Father, we want to thank you. You are a great God indeed. We blossom and we flourish. At the end we wither and we die. But you are the same. Yesterday, yesterday and forever. Nothing changed you. What a wonderful God we are attached to. What a wonderful God that connected us to himself. What a wonderful God you are. By our own power and strength, we will not be connected to you. But Lord, you detached us from the things that are worthless and made us open our eyes to see. Say, so those who don't know you are blinded by the devil. But Lord, how did you open our eyes? This shows your love. May we from today go out and show that love. Father, may we from today begin to live a brand new life. Lord, we are all guilty and we plead for mercy. Let the light of God shine in us. Let our staying here till this time not be in vain. Lord, that joy that you have said is for somebody. Nothing will take it away in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will go with us. You will show us mercy. Direct our steps. In Jesus' name, we pray. Before we share the grace, I want to use this opportunity to appreciate the choir. God will bless you. The choir presented us with what they call microphone. It's a wonderful thing how they managed to buy that kind of expensive microphone and it's, it did not even end there after they bought that and somebody else I don't know I don't know I think they know my secret the secret of my ministry is worship and when we worship God anointing comes and they decided to buy that and bring it to the church what they are saying that let the gospel be proclaimed for the whole world to hear. God will decorate your life. God will show you mercy. Whatever is remaining, God will restore. And it shall be well with you. Because you are doing this, listening to God and obeying him. Anything that has been disobeying you from today will obey you. In the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says when all your obedience is complete, what will happen? It will punish every disobedience. So anything that you've been calling on to God and it disobey you, from today we will obey you in Jesus' name. God bless you. We really appreciate you. Let's take our closing song. Unite. 
and you stayed. I pray nobody complained. You had patience and you stayed. God said that's humility. The fruit of humility you will receive it. Amen. You see Paul said to the, to the people in the ship I heard an angel spoke. And the angel said, no one will perish. And he, the confidence came upon his life and he said it to the people. Even though there was trouble, he said, I know the God I serve. Nobody will perish. And the word was fulfilled. Jesus Christ spoke. And the servant of the centurion was healed. He said, he has given us the word. I speak to every one of you. Listening to the sound of this, my voice. Father, if I've even served you for just one second and you, you were pleased just for one second in my life ever since you created me. Please honor this word that is coming out. Amen. Jehovah, I want you, please. Somebody here will receive the kind of joy the joy that passes all understanding. Release it upon somebody in the name of Jesus. The joy that money cannot buy. That will come with peace in the name of Jesus. Yes, I know when we talk of joy, trouble will come and then joy will bring, will come at the end. Father, that trouble will not flood the person. Amen. The joy will cover all the trouble. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said there's somebody you have passed, you have been passing through serious trouble. He said the time to receive the benefit of serving God has come. I don't know who you are, but that joy will come in the name of Jesus. I speak before the end of this month, somebody will testify. And nothing will stop it in the name of Jesus. As far as we are worshipping this living God, who has the authority, who has the final say? He has spoken and so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, my daddy, because you honor your word even more than your name. Do it, oh God. There are more things you want to add. Lord, let it come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's share the grace in fellowship. You will go in peace. 
I have not been released yet. I don't know why. I have not been released. I have not been released. Happiness, come here. I have not been released yet. There is something that God wants you to do. There is something that God wants you to do. Everything is at your doorstep. There is something he wants you to give up. And whatever is that, the Lord will release it and you will hear from him in the name of Jesus. You have the heart that you want to serve God with all your heart and do everything for him. But today marks an end to those trials and hindrances. Jesus. Jesus. You said when we call, you will answer. Amen. Yes! That are supposed to come. Yes! That has been waiting. I command it and turn it to tears of joy. Amen. And I speak into your life. Every attack from the pit of hell. Brikola bashata kalaba. Father God, you search the heart, not the face. Go deep into the heart. Let this word go to the heart. Lord, let it restore. Peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. Is somebody's children that was uh, somebody's son that was inside the well, and the whole world stood still until they brought a person out. Yours will come out of life. In the name of Jesus. You cannot suffer in vain. From today, Lord, please have mercy. Give her peace and joy. In the name of Jesus. Congratulations, give me your hands. The Lord Almighty will visit you. The work of your hand will not be in vain. In Jesus' name. Go in peace. Lord, go with you. God bless you. And go with you in Jesus' name.